What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday to you. Happy cold, wet, dreary Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. That time of year is supposed to rain all week long, really. So, anyways, I hope your day is going well. I hope your week is going well. We survived Monday, so that's a good thing. And we're off and rolling. All right, so speaking of wet, and dreary, and cold conditions and kind of overcast, that leads us right into... Uh, the previous trivia question, and of course the answer to the previous trivia question was smog, a combination of smoke and fog. And in the first week of December 1952 in London, England, we had a smog, or they did rather, occurrence of epic environmental disaster proportions. Let me just let me just go over this with you folks. This was like nobody, anything anybody's ever seen. So at the time, in the early 50s, Britain was huge as far as coal production was concerned. UK had at one point produced a full quarter of the world's total coal. That's like 292 million tons. Okay, at one point they were the go-to place of the world for coal. Additionally, Britons were still using coal to heat their homes. Now this was they were behind the mark in, in this aspect. Everybody else had switched to oil coming out or go, going into coming out of World War II. They were still burning coal. To heat their homes, right? So you take those factors, check off those boxes, in addition to the fact that London had struggled with its air quality to begin with, resulting from polluted water from sewage, uh, a famous cholera outbreak from community water pumps that once occurred, long periods when emissions from factories and heating stoves used to suspend a greenish fog above the streets. I found that in my research. Yuck and double yuck with all that going on. Not the most hygienic or go green of a place to be at the time, UK, in the, in the 1950s, right? It was actually a British doctor in 1905, might I add, who coined the term smog, um, combining smoke and fog, of course, as I referenced earlier, to describe the city's air. So the, the whole concept and in, 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 in term smog was coined and, and developed from the UK, from their environmental conditions. Okay, skip to the first week of December 1952. Focus of the trivia question. When what was known as an anti-cyclone weather condition occurred, which basically amounted to a high-pressure weather system with warm, moist air stalling, moving into and just stalling over London, okay, pushing the air towards the ground. Nothing uncommon about that. That's just a that's just a weather condition, right? It's just kind of an extreme weather condition. Now you combine that with it the discharge from people's homes from burning coal as their sole heat source, right? And you you combine that with the sooty discharge from the coal factories. The cold temperatures condense the water vapor in the air in into fog, which is what happens, right? The, the cold temperatures, uh, it, it was kind of, it, it, that's basically like a temperature inversion, right? The weather phenomenon, what happened was what this amounts to, what this bottom line is to, is it trapped the horribly dangerous emissions that were, being, that were being sent upward. It trapped them over the city, okay, into an absolute epic environmental disaster that went on to really emphasize and highlight the danger of Britain's sole reliance on burning coal for everything. Basically, the smog, let's go check out some of these factors I found in my research, right? Okay, the smog was 200 meters thick. Thousands of tons of carbon dioxide smoke continued to be emitted, which is basically what uh, what burning coal will produce, right? Sulfur dioxide was created with the burning coal, which mixed with everything else going on, and this enveloped the city. And really, as far as human beings are concerned, this equated and bottom line to people dying by the thousands, just dropping dead and filling up morgues. The morgues were just uh, too full to even possibly describe. Um, you can research that and, and find the, the great smog of 1952 in London, England, and, and, and see some of, the, some, of the, some of the horrible stories. There was zero visibility. Chaos erupted. People on the sidewalks couldn't see as far as their own feet, and it literally choked the city. Some of those pictures that I've included there, I, I, there, there were uh, many pictures, but th those three in particular emphasize the conditions, really, because those three pictures that you see right there 
are in broad daylight. And they include police officers trying to direct buses and traffic um, with candles and flares and so forth in the middle of the day. That's the, the black, sooty fog discharge that hung over the city in London, England in 1952 in December. For, for four or five days, this went on before it finally, uh, finally lifted. The, that last picture on the bottom is uh, kids playing in it. <laughs> Golly, just it just cannot imagine. Even as the smog eventually lifted, which it did, it would have lasting health repercussions, as you can imagine, for everyone in the London area. And the reason that I uh, emphasized and point out that those were kids playing playing in, in in the streets in the middle of that was because kids were affected the most. We had lung disease, asthma, child respiratory sicknesses as they grew, went through puberty and grew into adulthood. They were long lasting. Well, after these four days, okay, the British government were initially very reluctant to do anything. I found in my research that Winston Churchill at the time wouldn't even make a public comment about it. Uh, and um, they didn't, and, and, and the, the par parliament didn't either, but eventually they relented and would go on to declare clean air a legislative priority without question. The Great Smog of 1952 drove British lawmakers to pass the world's first comprehensive national air pollution law in 1956. So that's a good thing that came out of this environmental disaster for sure. And to this day, the royal family is still very adamant about lessening the environmental footprint uh, of the UK in general. And that's well established. Prince Charles has made great efforts to do that. He's been very public about that. And as early even as this week in 2022, uh, Harry and Meghan, are in the United States pushing environmental acts, legislation, concern on a global aspect, right? So we don't ever have another pea super event as it became known. I found that in my research too, when uh, smog just crippled London, England in the first week of December in 1952. May we never see another environmental disaster of such proportions for sure. All right, folks, let's clean up the air, if you will, and uh, get to a brand new trivia question for today, December 6th. Here we go on this day in 1877 at only four pages long and three cents a copy. Now, that's a bargain. This daily newspaper began publishing for the first time and soon became well known for its political reporting, later for the printing of the Pentagon Papers, and for Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein's famous investigative work and coverage of the Watergate scandal. Good luck, folks. Try and stay dry this week. Thanks for all you do. All your hard work is greatly appreciated. Love you guys. Peace out. <laughs>